thanks for having me, having this opportunity. Uh, I will talk uh, about some of the um, uh, challenges that we see in the uh, energy utility sector um, and also how um, uh, IoT and 5G uh, can uh, address those. Uh, one of the challenges that I, one of the most serious challenges that I think that we have in order to solve the challenges that we have in, in, in the utility industry is to attract uh, the best brains that we have in, 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 in the world to, to take on these challenges that we have. And uh, I really hope that, that this is what we have in this room uh, to take on this. So, so please uh, take the challenge. Uh, I don't know, have you been listening to many persons like myself uh, talking about the disruption? Uh, naming that the uh, largest uh, taxi company in the world doesn't own any cars anymore, or that the biggest distributor of rooms doesn't uh, have any uh, buildings. Uh, no? Maybe, yes. So I think I do that as well. Uh, <coughs> so the, the, the reason why I do this is, is, is not to go through these examples, but what I would like to say is that uh, on this list you don't find the world's largest energy utility company owning no assets, right? It's not there yet. Gartner uh, has predicted it that it, it will be there in 2020. We can, uh, we, 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 can, we can challenge that maybe. But the question then is, why does it look like this? And this is a, 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 a study made by Ericsson uh, about the digitalization spend or revenue uh, uh, caused by 5G that different industries will, will, will spend. Uh, and at the top of this list, one fifth of that spend will, will come to energy utilities. Uh, you don't need to go to Ericsson to find these type of numbers. If you go IT or 5G, you will see it in, in uh, many other uh, industry analysts as well. Maybe not number one, but at least top three. So why does it look like this? We haven't seen this type of disruption or change in, in, in utility industry. So that is what I will look at. So first, uh, energy utility industry is on the verge of disruption. Uh, I will see if I can prove you uh, on that one. I will say something about the IoT and 5G, and then finally, uh, when everything is connected into these pictures. Uh, this, is, this is also one of the challenges that blockchain maybe can solve. Uh, the <laughs> to be a little bit mean. Uh, <laughs> We have, in, in this case, we, you see that we have a rapid growth of the uh, renewable energy sources in, in, in Europe. Uh, in 94, we passed the 1% of solar and wind in the power, ge power generation mix in, in Europe. This is also the same year in Sweden. Uh, in 2014, we are now at 17%, both in the European Union and in Sweden. Uh, and this is fantastic development, right? Uh, the challenge is that we are doing that in at the same time, we have a decline in demand for electric power. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, it means that the energy utility companies today are selling less kilowatt hours in, in Europe, right? Uh, this is also uh, a market that is priced on the margin cost, uh, if, if you know. So it means that utilities are selling less kilowatt hours to a lower price, meaning that Revenues for the largest utilities in Europe are declining. This is a graph of the 13 largest utilities having their headquarters in the European Union. Um, but you can also see that the earnings are declining much faster. And, and this is, let's say, really uh, uh, hurting uh, the industry. Uh, it's an industry that is really capital in, in, intense. Um, and the margin cost based pricing is also a challenge since you have. Uh, going more and more to fuel less type of electricity production. I think that one of the biggest challenges in the utility industry right now uh, is about the business model <coughs> because you're trying to price the kilowatt hour and that is eroding and there's nothing saying that it won't continue doing that. Uh, that is not the bottleneck in the modern industry. So as long as the industry doesn't come up with a recipe of changing that business model, uh, you will not earn uh, any money anymore. Uh, <coughs> so based on this, uh, you need to be able to, to, let's say, price the flexibility, the storage, 
the new business models, maybe based on blockchain, as mentioned earlier, in order to come up with that. But as long as you can't do that, this will be a real challenge. And this is what it's all about in the utility industry, I would say, right now. So, is the utility industry on the verge of disruption or not? Uh, a study made by a former Harvard professor and also uh, McKinsey uh, found out six aspects or, or, or uh, characteristics of industries that are on the verge of disruption, looking back on what has happened. And you can, you, you can look at this on, on your own, but first of all, your products and services are widely desired, but largely unaffordable. In the utility industry today, we have never ever been as dependent on electricity as we are now. Uh, still many question the prices. Uh, Customer and trust and satisfactions are in, in steep decline. It has been like that for quite some time in, in, in utility industry. Uh, a highly concentrated business model with high fixed cost, obviously. A high degree of hidden assets outside organizational boundaries. Uh, to have a comment on this, the bottlenecks that we had before, the production of the kilowatt hours is perhaps within the utility companies, most of them, a lot of the renewables are owned by other parties. But uh, uh, what we see now, the new challenges, the flexibility, uh, the storage, is not necessarily owned by the traditional utility companies. So the, uh, the new assets needed to generate the value is many times placed outside the organizational borders of utility companies. Fifth, the lack of assets needed to meet the change in customer needs. You'll be the judge of that. And also the lack of awareness and our capabilities necessary to learn customers' true needs. I would say, of course, you have uh, regulatory aspects and then a few different things. But I would say that most of us would say that uh, looking at this, uh, we can see a dramatic change in the utility industry uh, ahead. And I think it's already has started uh, uh, in this. We see a lot of things happening on the market today. Uh, so what about IoT and 5G? Uh, it's a converging trend. You can't really split them up and say that this is 5G, this is IoT, and then we also have cloud. And that's someone now asked cloud. Didn't we talk about that a decade ago? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, and uh, to quote uh, uh, Alan here, maybe the cloud 2.0 or something. But what we see in, in, in 5G that I will come back to later, it's a lot about finding uh, uh, the new use cases and how that will change. And the biggest change going from 4G to 5G is perhaps not only technology, but it's about the business model. Uh, what is funding or financing the 4G technology today is the cell phones, right? The users of the cell phone, this is what is fun funding, funding it. When you go to 5, 5G, uh, we are past that. Then it's the things that will do it. Uh, because it's the industries and the enterprises, public sector that will finance the 5G infrastructure. And that means also a big shift in business models from the telecom operators and their customers. They're shifting from consumers to business. Uh, a lot of this revenue stream seems on that. So 5G will, for many reasons, be consumed via the IoT. And that is why IoT is so important for Ericsson. Because if we don't win the IoT game, we will never ever be able to win the 5G game. So what about cloud? Well, parts of the 5G is a lot about, about low latency, high bandwidth, and stuff like that. Uh, we can connect it to uh, autonom uh, autonomous uh, uh, driving, for instance, and a lot of other things that requires extremely low latencies in communication. Uh, and here we see that we can't any longer rely on the centralized clouds that we have up in Norrland in Sweden, for instance. Uh, we need to have the computing power much closer to the cars and the traffic. And here we are now, so when we are rolling out the 5G infrastructure, what is happening is that on the site, the radio-based stations, we are uh, removing the old equipment. We put in the new, neat, uh, small 5G equipment needed. Uh, the, the space that are there, we are putting in batteries for better uh, uh, robustness, but also computing power, uh, which means that the cloud comes much closer to the uh, 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 things that it's going to, to, to manage. Some of the technologies are already here. Uh, 5G is not only about bigger, faster uh, uh, things. It's also about having um, the right capa capacity for the right uh, purposes. Uh, today, already in the 4G world or the, in LTE, we have a lot of 
uh, massive IoT things. We want to connect small sensor, battery-driven things that we can, uh, we can put them behind concrete when we build things. And we can leave them there for, for, for decades and they still continue to talk. Uh, we can do things if we do district heating, for instance, uh, we throw down sensors in the ground two meters uh, below there and th the sensors talk to us about uh, vibration, heating uh, and, and whatever you want for decades and we can, we can uh, monitor that, those, that type of infrastructure. That we can enable with what is called the narrowband IoT or CAT-M1. These technologies are already available. Uh, Telia, a neighbor of here, uh, announced Thursday last week that they have now launched it in full of Sweden. They have had uh, smaller site island sites earlier. This is perfect for the things like smart metering and other, let's say, not so um, requiring uh, infrastructure like uh, 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 an autonomous car, for instance. Uh, we expect this to, to uh, uh, grow quite fast. We see a lot of interest in it. A lot of device manufacturers looking into this and enabling these type of things. And this already exists today. Uh, another thing that's uh, about cellular technology, for instance, is that uh, it's expensive and costs are really competitive compared to other things as well. And you can also say that the, in, when it comes to coverage, uh, the deep penetration is uh, fantastic, I would say. Tests that we have done shows that you can uh, talk to uh, sensors uh, many meters down in the ground uh, without antennas and, or things like that, uh, talking cellular. But IoT is not only technology, uh, because one thing that is the key shift, I think, from machine to machine to IoT, if I might use that, is that we are going from the traditional silos. Uh, many systems today are designed in that you're having devices, and then you have one data collection uh, uh, managing that one, uh, data collection system managing it. And you, it has alarms, you have again the smart meters, you can have in, in healthcare, you can have it in yeah, anywhere you want. That's how it looks today. Uh, what we do with IT is that we are using a lot of more uh, common technologies in between. You still have the vertical kind of device maybe, and maybe also the application on top. But everything in between is a common infrastructure that you can share, giving uh, scale advantages for this one. So it means that uh, there are a lot of more things about when you enable interoperability, you go through vertical domains and not only within one small domain of standards. You go cross industry. You go from innovation is more business driven than technology driven. And uh, the infrastructure is multi-purpose instead of single purpose. Uh, and this is of course not happening overnight, but it will happen. Uh, and we see that pace is taking off. Uh, taking off. The big issue about the IT, IT right now is that IT is a mess. Uh, it really is a mess. I don't know if you have an IT strategy. Uh, well, for, for those of you who are representing a company here, I've seen it elsewhere that uh, okay, what platform should we use uh, when we standardize and build on this one? And you can go around asking how many people, I don't know, there are hundreds of them out there. And most end up on uh, Microsoft Azure or Amazon or something like that. Uh, <coughs> the, the issue is, is, is greater than that because we are making it very, very complex. So if I'm a device supplier, let's say that I'm an innovative uh, company here in, in Stockholm trying to do uh, nice stuff. I have a device and then I say, oh, I have to connect it to an IoT platform. Which one should I choose? And if I do one and the, another customer uses another IoT platform, I have to do two integrations and then three integrations. And there are about 500 uh, platforms around the world uh, and so forth. It takes forever. The same goes for developers. So if I want to onboard the best brains of um, the universities to come to this uh, platform or, or utilities or whatever, uh, you have to pick and choose an IT platform where you will build your expertise on. It doesn't fly. We will never get the scale or marginal cost of based on this. Uh, so what Ericsson did, coming from telecom industry, uh, used our working with standards and interoperability. Uh, we started looking at, okay, how do we organize all of these device suppliers in the market? Those are millions and millions, and we said that it's, it's, it's not an option, right? You can go down looking at the modules, and there are not millions maybe, well, but there are quite many of them. But if you look at the chipset providers, uh, we conclude that five chipset providers 
uh, constitutes for 95% of the device market in the world. Uh, so the recipe was that when it comes to massive IoT, we will standardize the market together with them. So today, uh, from April actually, this year, uh, if you do uh, constraint uh, communication, which is narrowband, you don't have, you can't run the big TCP IP protocols or MQTT of the world. You need to go narrowband, you do the, with the UDP and co-op, for those of you uh, who know those. And on top of that, you put something called lightweight and twem, uh, and you're using an information model that is called uh, IPSO. Uh, and this is what is the new thing. So IPSO is a way to describe the digital twins of the world. Uh, it's a semantic how you describe the world digitally. That is uh, interoperable and horizontal. And the lightweight M12 is a protocol which you can use, ask any device to say, that, okay, who are you? It will explain who it is. And you can then ask them questions. What is your meter reading? What is your temperature? What is whatever? And you will get the data back for this. So in these chipsets that now are released on the market from April, March, April this year, these software stacks are already included. So you can deploy them directly. You can start talking to them from, from, from your IoT platform instead, if you are supporting the like of the M12 uh, standards. This will revolutionize the IoT market in the way of interoperability and lowering the barriers to enter this market. Today we are pushing a number of projects where we are trying to showcase this. Uh, one of them actually together with Vattenfall uh, in something called Digital Demo Stockholm. Uh, we are doing that. Yeah. So please look at these technologies for those of you who are interested. So when everything is connected, uh, one difference, what is my coming in? So. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> I will keep it short. When, when everything is connected, the difference this time developing industries when it comes to the 5G and IoT is that we are not going to develop silos. So the focus in our belief, in a study that we have done, is that you will focus on use cases that are very similar in different industries. So what we have done is that we have looked at where are the, 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 the money for our customers, the operators, and we can see that if you go into the 5G business and, and become a more enabling of services and, and, and um, businesses in this one, the operator potential uh -huh. added revenue is 36% compared to today. Uh, they are used to having flattish growth. So if they can do this, uh, they will be really keen on, on, on doing it. What we see is that there are different use cases in different industries doing this. So we have smart energy management and smart grid and utilities especially. We have divided those into use cases, uh, which are quite many. Out of these, a few of them are 5G created. You can't do it without 5G. Some are 5G enhanced. They can be improved by 5G and some of them are not related to 5G at all. And then out of this, we have from industries, we have then nine common use cases where we see will address different type of industries and we will see uh, developments in these uh, different clusters in order to enable this on a more horizontal and interoperable level. And just to showcase, we can see that utilities are specifically uh, relevant for three of these use cases where we see developments already started um, for this one. Uh, yeah, I can skip it like this and do it like that, uh, <laughs> not to go into details. Uh, when it comes to the digitalization in general, I would, I would urge you to, let's say, uh, this is an EIS uh, no regrets policy uh, recommendation. And I think it's very relevant also to, to companies and people working in the industry to look at what, what to do. But I think that it's about doing things and being active in this industry. Uh, building expertise, learning from others, experiment, uh, ensure appropriate access to data and, and, and stuff like that. So start do things uh, and, and learn, especially when it comes to security issues. People tend to be extremely afraid, but learn them and assign it directly from the start. Thank you.